the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. What do you find wisdom from on high come? Take possession of our minds and hearts. Our bodies. Our souls. Take possession. Take control. Lead. Guide, enlighten to your work in us this morning. Heal our souls that have been hurt by life, by sin, by evil. Recreate us. Change us, transform us. Renew us. Strengthen us. O oh Lord, we thank you for the night's rest. For the light of this new day, we thank you, we praise you. Praise you, God. We acknowledge you, Lord. We acknowledge you as our, you are the source of all things. Let's become aware. <clears throat> We are not alone. He has told us when we gather in his name. He has promised us. To be with us. To be present. Let us open up to this mystery of, of who, uh, who God is. Let us open ourselves to listen to the voice of the Creator, the voice of truth. Let's make the, ener the effort this morning. It is worth the effort because he wants to do so much for us again and again. He who waits upon us. So let us decide now for prayer. We may rise, rise up to that level of the spirit. 
And you penetrate the heavenlies. Because that is where our God is. He's in the spirit. He's, his words are spirit. Just come to that word, word of, of the word that reveals itself, reveals a person, a relationship, because that word is love, it is relationship, it is personal, it is a person. Someone who, the word, who creates the spoken word, but the word also who became incarnate, became flesh. It's the full revelation, the fullness of that word took on flesh, showed itself in the form of a person, namely Jesus of Nazareth. So we can now see that truth. We can see our God. I am the way, the truth. I am the life. Let us, let us marvel at who this man is, the God man. Let's look into our faith this morning. Let's find that relationship. Let us enter into it. Let us experience it. Let us live it. These last weeks we have, last week, every day we have looked at and yesterday, the Good Shepherd. The image of shepherd and its sheep. Shepherd who cares. The sheep know his voice. Are aware. They listen to his voice. They don't listen to any other voices, only the voice of the Good Shepherd who leads his sheep in and out 
of the sheepfold, the gate, through the gate. Sheep that belong to me. Listen to my voice. I know them and they. They follow me. I, I give them eternal life. And this is how we enter into that, that life. It's not a something you earn. It's not something you have to work for. It's just some. It's it's something you have. Somewhere. You have to. You just have to follow. You listen and you follow your, it's like an obedience to the word. An obedience to the shepherd. This total, total submission. There is no other voice and we know how dangerous it is. When we listen to other voices, the voices of the thieves and the brigands. Who come only to steal and to destroy. We, we know very well the effects. Of that. And we fall into fear and anxiety. And we lose sight of our shepherd and his security, his safety. Get distracted by other vices and go down the wrong paths. Get lost even. Get separated from the other sheep. You know, this is. Very possible. Sheep that belong to me. Listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. They will never be lost. If we want to know Jesus, if we want to, we need to know relationship. We need to know, it's not knowing about Jesus. It's about, it's about knowing and living Jesus, living that relationship. So ultimately, it's being like the sheep with the shepherd. It's and living dependency. Sheer dependency that my shepherd will is watching over me. Taking care of me. It is. Let's enter that relationship now. The relationship the good shepherd.
good shepherd who who laid down his, his life for his sheep. Let's understand that when, it, when God, when it, we are lost, we are children of the Father. A child of God is lost. He's the good shepherd who seeks, who leaves the ninety-nine. goes in search of the lost sheep, which seems absolutely crazy on one level. But that is the craziness of, of our shepherd, of Jesus. It's how crazy, how madly he loves us. He will never leave us. There's, it's like as if there's something missing until he finds us. It's like God is incomplete until we are restored and brought safely back into the arms of the Father, the arms of the, the shepherd. It is a wonderful image. to come back to that place of security and rest and peace. This is where we already can taste that eternal life, that blissfulness of the heavenly reality because when you're there, you, you don't want for anything. You have everything you need. You are safe and provided for. And you are submissive now. You're submitted to to his will so even though your your life has its issues and problems but because you're so rooted in that security you just have you you don't you you don't Just accept your lot, you accept your circumstance. It's not you can put up with anything if you if you live in trust. If that faith is strong. You can accept your present circumstance. No matter how difficult, no matter what you have to go through, what pain you are enduring. What you have to. To deal with. I walk through the valley of darkness. O oh, evil shall I fear. You are there, good shepherd, with your crook and your staff are my comfort, my shelter, my shield, my defence, 
my strength. My best friend, Jesus. We really are touching the essence of, of faith. Where we give our hearts to him whose heart is always open to us. We surrender our hearts. Surrender everything. then there is no fear. We can we can face everything that the world puts before us. Our fears lose their power over us. They disappear. The evil is gone because love has filled in every emptiness, every evil, everything that is lacking and missing in me is now restored. Lord, you are my good shepherd, and in you I lack nothing. There is nothing I shall want. You guide me along the right path. Guide me to still waters. Fresh and green are the pastures where you give me repose. Your restful waters, you lead me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. This is Jesus who firmly holds me by the hand, does not allow me to, to be lost, to lose myself. Those most difficult moments. Have you found, have you let yourself be found by the Good Shepherd this morning? Have you encountered him? Are you experiencing the embrace of your father?
you know his love and safety? Do you know how loved and cared for you are? Have you allowed him to to pick you up and place you in his arms? This is what gives God the greatest glory. When we allow God to be God, we allow him to save us, to find us, to, to redeem us, to save us from sin, from a fear and anxiety, everything that is taking our peace and freedom. We need a shepherd, we need, we cannot live without him. We are incomplete as he is incomplete without us. And so he'll never leave us. He is the hound of heaven. Until we're safely back in his arms. Isn't that wonderful just to know that even when we forget about him. We just go back into the world and everything else. He's never distanced himself from us and never will. He's right there. Beside us, it's wonderful thought I think you know even when you think you're maybe alone and yet he's he's right there you just have to become aware of it Just reflecting on all of this, like, we think of all the people who've, who have rejected God, you know, how how the Lord must be hurting. You know, you can look at the crucifix. But it's, it is so real, like it's, even today the Lord is, is, yes, he's glorified and he's risen, but the Lord is suffering until every child comes home that his love is incomplete it's, there's a suffering love you know the words in the cross i thirst that he's thirsting for for the souls that are lost that have gone astray and it's like as if he's constantly searching seeking out the lost and you know, the voice of conscience is, 
in every human being on the face of the earth. Everyone who turns away from truth and goodness, they hear that voice of conscience. It is the voice of the Good Shepherd calling them back. That they know that they've done wrong, they know they're lost. You know, it is it's very sad, really, when you. I was just, I was here last night. And I was saying my few prayers. I was, I was doing some writing on my laptop and I had the window open. So there's a car park, my, our car park is below. Some guy must have come in off the road. And uh, he was some guy from Africa. And he was on the phone. It's on his, like, you know, you have your earphones and you can talk. But he talked and he talked and it was just so, he was a businessman. And he just, it was an, one argument after another, after another. I wasn't listening now exactly, but it was just all negative. And he was, he was like a guy that was seriously under pressure. And he was complaining. He got the wrong deal. He got the wrong, this happened and he was treated this and everything was against him and like he really was suffering. He was completely on his own, I felt. He was trying to take on the world and business and the pressure of just, he, he seemed to be very like a manager or something. He was, he had huge responsibilities and he was fighting these other guys and Went on and I was going to shout out the window to tell him to move on, but I felt I didn't, couldn't, I shouldn't do that. Just kind of asking God to bless him, maybe. Just reminding me how how hard it is to live sometimes. You know, if you if you soak up every negative word or thought, and it was all negative, like you. He was a good man. I looked down. He was fine, big, strong fella, fit. He was probably in the gym, but he was not happy. And you know, we can spend a lifetime in sadness. It's so true. Like we were all sad till we met the Lord. We were on our own, really lost, till we found Jesus. It is. It really is infinitely sad that a life can a lifetime can be spent away from that place of security. We have to suffer on our own, fight on our own, rather than just consciously resting in His arms. not worrying about the future or decisions or responsibilities. It's a great mystery to know that even that man in the car park last night, I don't know how many years it'll take. Maybe he just needs somebody. He needs to fail and cry ash and burn I don't know but before he'll cry out that was my experience before I found the Lord but what I what we do know is that love will always pursue love will always seek out the lost we'll go in search of the lost sheep Even the most hardened, those people in the prisons, those who are fighting on the side of Russia, the leaders who are committing terrible atrocities every day for these last two months now. 
even the most hardened, that love never stops looking, searching for that repentance and remorse just to show that mercy of our God, the truth of our God, waiting for us to turn back from our wrong ways, our, our sins, And where we're all getting angry and bitter with all those who are killing people and destroying the world. And there is, there is our creator who is love true and true. He is uncompromising in his tender mercy. Lord Jesus, I ask you to, to go in search of that young man that I heard last night. To find him and to joyfully lay him on your shoulders today. That he may hear your voice and he may cry out to you in his time of need he may encounter the Good Shepherd. We read from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. It was the time when the feast of dedication was being celebrated in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple, walking up and down in the portico of Solomon. The Jews gathered round him and said, how much longer are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have told you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name are my witness, but you do not believe because you are no sheep of mine. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. 
they will never be lost. And no one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone. And no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was the time when the Feast of Dedication was being celebrated in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple, walking up and down in the portico of Solomon. The Jews gathered round him and said, How much longer are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, Tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have told you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name are my witnesses, my witness, but you do not believe, because you are no sheep of mine. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never be lost. And no one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone. And no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. 